Okay, in this video I'm going to uh, show this project that I've been working on. It's a uh, web-controlled watering can. So let me just give you a demonstration here of how this thing works. You'll see that as the can is rotated in the web browser, the actual watering can tips over the mechanism over there. So I've got some help uh, with the client side of this. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about the WebKit programming that was done, but basically this web app uh, sends commands to a web server. Uh, the web server then sends those commands onto an Arduino, and the Arduino controls the motor that's driving the water and can. Okay, so this is the uh, web server module. It's a NetMedia site player, and it's actually quite an old piece of technology. Uh, but when I started this project, I was looking for a completely self-contained embedded web server, and this seemed to be the easiest way to go. Uh, a friend of mine pointed out that certain WRT routers uh, can be set up with like a custom version of Linux and you could actually use that as a web server since those have a serial port hidden inside them so that that actually might be a better solution uh, but I didn't know about that at the time and ended up buying one of these uh, the nice thing is that they it boots up extremely fast I mean it's it's almost instant on and um, it seems to be working pretty well I've had experience with these in the past and made my own board for one and it, it had a lot of reliability problems so this time I bought the the whole development board, which comes with um, the Ethernet jack, which contains like a transformer inside there. And uh, this one seems to be working pretty well. So this is the thing that's actually serving that web page that you saw. And uh, when the web browser sends commands to the server through GET requests, this thing just parses that into a serial data and sends the serial out to the Arduino. So it's really just one wire. You can even see I cut the um, the other side of the link off because I didn't need it. And this chip was getting confused with um, my debug commands that were being sent from the Arduino to the computer. So it's just one direction serial from the web server to the Arduino. And I'm using COM1 on the Arduino. Uh, I also decided to go with 9600 baud just because that's what this thing defaults to and it's actually surprisingly difficult to change it and store that change in non-volatile RAM. Like I say, this thing is kind of <laughs> kind of old and outdated, but it is working. Okay, so after we have the serial commands from uh, those uh, server GET requests into the Arduino, the Arduino uh, drives this motor control circuit here and the motor control circuit powers the watering can. So, uh, for example, one of the commands that comes in from the web browser is a number of 0 to 100, which describes where the watering can should be. And the Arduino has information coming from the watering can of where the position actually is, and it uses a PID loop to just uh, adjust the motor control to send the watering can to the right position. So it's closed loop servo control. And as I remember, I, I used uh, almost entirely proportional control. The integral control really didn't work that well. I had a lot of oscillation problems, so I, and I think I might have used a little bit of differential control to cut down on an overshoot. So it's actually a PD controller. Uh, the actual switching device that I used to drive the motor is an L6203. It's an H-bridge in one package, and it even handles its own gate driving circuitry. So all you have to do is plug this into a power source. In this case I'm using a very small computer power supply and that sends 12 volts into the drive circuit. This is just a smoothing cap. 12 volts go into the L6203 and the Arduino is able to control this thing with just 5 volt signals. So there's two signals going in. In fact these are it right here. One to spin the motor clockwise and one to spin the motor counterclockwise. And the Arduino just outputs PWM uh, on the appropriate pin to make the motor turn. Okay, so to track the position of the watering can, uh, I'm using just a potentiometer here, and um, it's just an analog signal that goes back to the Arduino so that it always knows where the watering can is. And as the can moves, it just turns that pot. It's actually quite solidly mounted, so the position is, 
is very accurately measured. The motor is a, uh, a an electric window motor for a car. I think it was probably for a Honda since it's a Denso uh, part there made in Japan. And this wheel here is a caster that I bought at the hardware store and machined a groove into the rubber and then press fit a um, a Delrin shaft in there and then press fit the shaft onto the motor. Okay, I think I used a set screw on there too. So of course one of the benefits is that once this thing is controllable by any web browser uh, we can use mobile devices like this Android G1 and uh, control the can that way. You can see that the screen update on this phone is actually not that good because uh, the CPU is is kind of outdated in this phone already. <laughs> But it does work on iPhones and uh, anything with a WebKit browser. Another part of this project is this uh, water vortex tube that I made uh, with the help of a friend. And when the motor is started, the fan inside is spun around and creates a vortex. So eventually I'll have a separate uh, web page interface for this, separate from the watering can. But for now I'll just show you with the same interface.